Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-08. The group stood at the top of the cliff overlooking the bay, not too far from the Bayo's fortress. The sun's been up for over an hour, noted Harris the mage. Patience, urged Brother Stance the Verte Order. The enormous Zenobian cleric Grish paced nervously until pointing and angrily looking at Phidias the Rogue. Your friend had better not have screwed us over, gnome. Or, or... Or what? interjected Yolanda Two Blades. It wouldn't be Phidias's fault if Kellogg's doesn't show. Grish threw up his hands and yelled out, Bah! just as a loud creak signaled the opening of the courtyard doors. A large pair of lizards pulling a wooden cart emerged from the fortress, and the diminutive halfling that they had been waiting on was holding the reins of the large, sandy-colored reptiles. The party moved towards the wagon after being signaled by the short cartwright. As they approached, they all noticed that the small man looked a bit under the weather. Rough night, short round, asked Sir Omel, knight of Bacchus. Don't even get me started, was his response. Well, it's about time. We've waited for over an hour, snapped Grish. Well, excuse me, said Kellogg's. Takes him a little while to load all this metal, as he pointed to the back of the cart. Harris and Yolanda lifted the cover on the back of the wagon, exposing a multitude of silver bars as Phidias looked inquisitively at the creatures used to pull the wagon. What are these things? he inquired. Kellogg's replied that they are called morgas. He went on to explain that they are not the fastest thing, but can move over any terrain without delay. Are they fast? asked Brother Stance. Only when being chased, was the reply. How long will it take us to get there? When will the dragon show up? Will it be there when we arrive? Are there any defensive positions at the shrine? Peppered Grish to Kellogg's. Oh, hi, enormous one. Why, yes, I am tired. Thank you for asking. I'm just pleased that I'll have the pleasure of listening to you all day long. As the angry cleric began to turn red with anger, Kellogg's waved his hands. It's about half a day's trip. I usually beat the dragon and it makes me wait, so show a little patience. Defensive positions? Yeah, I'm a lover, not a fighter. You'll have to decide when we get there. Let's get moving, Sir Omel interrupted. The sooner we get there, the better off we'll be. The group will split half, al half walking along the left and the other half walking along the right. As they set out down the rocky cliff, they spied a large forest in the distance. Phidias, already tired of walking, jumped up next to Kellogg's and asked him what that place was. The halfling explained that it was called Pinewood, and it's generally safe. Generally? asked Yolanda. <coughs> yes, continued Kellogg's. The creatures that resides in the forest tend to fear the morgas. Why is that? replied the fighter. Uh, because morgas eat hobgoblins, smiled the halfling, as he'd been into a large purple fruit. I brought some food in the back of the wagon if anyone else is hungry. After two hours of ambling movement, the group arrived at the edge of the pine wood. Ruts in the trail showed that Kellogg's had made this trip a few times. Eyes flickered within the dark corners and small woodland creatures could be seen skirting about as the party approached. Brother Stance remarked that it must be safe as those creatures hadn't run off. I surmise we are free of hobgoblins at this point. His colleagues nodded in agreement, but continued to be mindful of their surroundings. At the front of the wagon, the halfling and gnome began to play a game of I Spy, with Kellogg's always choosing a tree. An argument ensued as Phidias lambasted the halfling's ability to make the game interesting. Interesting, sputtered the cartwright. What a damn forest, and there's nothing interesting here. Yolanda the fighter was guarding the rear of the wagon, and bent down on the trail to examine something. Sir Omel noted the issue and had Kellogg stop. The group turned and Harris asked Yolanda what was wrong. 
From the mud, the fighter rose up with a broken axe handle. Kellox noticed the item and pointed out that pine wood was a favorite locale for loggers. The fighter had pointed out that there was flesh, fresh blood on the broken handle. Everyone took defensive positions as Kellox began to lambast them. It's not that big a deal, the halfling said. Loggers often break their tools and cut their hands with, but his words were cut short as several arrows struck the front of the wagon next to him. Diving between the morgas, he noticed many feet coming from all directions from his position. From his concealment, he could hear the members of the group yelling out assailants coming from all angles. Grunting the, and the clashing of metal on metal rang out. The reptile mount on the left reared up as Kellox attempted to roll out of the way of its shifting feet. Checking the front, he noticed that the beasts had caught a hobgoblin warrior between them and was tearing the attacker in half, splattering blood everywhere. As the noise of battle surrounded the halfling, he noticed several hobgoblins fall and observed the familiar leggings of the party coming together to form a cohesive battle line. Nervously, Kellogg searched the bottom of the wagon where he had fallen and located his slingshot. The item was normally used for hunting birds, but fearing death by a hobgoblin, he gathered himself and prepared to engage the enemy. Summoning all the courage he could find, he jumped atop the wagon and spied a hobgoblin approaching from the left towards Grish, the cleric. Kellox noticed the enormous man already had a hobgoblin in each hand and was bashing them against each other and did not notice the approaching assailant. As the closing attacker raised his blade to stab the Zenobian, Kellox let fly a missile weapon, striking the hobgoblin in the eye, causing him to spin and land at the feet of the cleric. Having throttled his pair already, he tossed them aside like ragdolls and picked up the one at his feet. With one hand on his throat and the other on the creature's groin, the large man snapped the creature across his knee as he bent down. The noise of the spine breaking caused Kellogg's to vomit, sending purple fluid all over the pair of morgas. After gathering himself, he looked around and noticed that the party was surveying the area. A quick head count revealed that they had made quick work of their attackers, which numbered nearly 20 to the party. As the halfling looked on, he observed Omel, Knight of Bacchus, hold up four fingers. In response, Grish held up five. As the warrior bowed, the cleric nodded towards Kellox and said, I think he might have gotten the last one, though. The party checked the bodies and took in coins that the creatures had on them. Phidias reappeared in the area and pointed out that there were no others present. A long streak of black blood along his arm gave evidence that the gnome had participated in the defense quite well. With everyone good, Yolanda Two Blades nodded as well. It appears that it was a random attack, but let's press on and get out of these woods. Kellogg shook his head weakly and returned to the driver position. Phidias jumped up next to him and said, I spy with my little gnome eye a one-eyed hobgoblin, and then broke into raucous laughter, causing Kellogg's to fight back yet another round of vomit. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.